I'm negative. So I'm hey, out of hey, hey. All right, Mike. Yeah. I'm always <laughs> negative, but I. <laughs> but my disposition notwithstanding. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. That's amazing when you live with somebody and you manage to avoid getting it. Yeah, yeah. Good for My you. My explanation is I probably already had it. I don't. Yeah, know. yeah. Right, right. Entirely possible. <laughs> right. Yeah. All I know is, and knock on wood that I don't get sick, but. You know, this quarantining thing, when you're not sick, is the ball. It's the ball. <laughs> it's like, okay, I've got to take time off from work. Wow, bugger. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and call everyone. Hey, today is Monday, November the 9th, uh, 2020. The time is now 5 p.m. The uh, vote to meeting of the city of Trinidad for the city of Trinidad will now uh, come to order. And tonight we have, uh, looks like, five particular items. Item one, Elisa Streisfeld from the Cloud Department of Transportation regarding vehicle emissions research. Item two, Vineman Lake Resort request for proposals. And this is just for council to review what we want to be in the proposals. Item three is third quarter marijuana sales tax discussion item four nonprofit funding discussion uh, which falls also under the marijuana sales tax item five direction of on committing of our of our uh, rainy day funds and item six of course is just if uh, council has any other agenda items that uh, they want to look at in, in the near future so we're going to start off first of all with uh, Item one, Lisa Streisfeld from the Colorado Department of Transportation regarding vehicle emissions research. Uh, are you, Lisa, are you on? She's been off and on, I'm not sure what's happening. Lisa? Well, let's go on to uh, item two then, and maybe she will check in again and we'll get her back on if uh, uh, when she gets uh, settled in again. She was on earlier, but I don't see her now. So on, on to item two, Monument Lake Resort request for proposals. Uh, Mr. Valentine, you want to give us a brief, please? Sure, uh, Council. Uh, staff was uh, in the midst of, of reviewing this uh, uh, proposal and we were going to bring something to you with staff recommendations but then we kind of all got quarantined and couldn't meet and get all the everything put together so I wanted to get this in front of council this is the uh, proposal that uh, was submitted for the previous request so there's a few things highlighted like dates that need to be changed and stuff and and uh, a few amendments, but I wanted to get council's uh, direction if, if they were able to review this, if they uh, think we should do something different or, uh, you know, expand on the proposal. So looking for council direction. It's on now. So if you don't mind, okay. do you wanna, can we go back to her, please? Not Stop. a problem. Uh, Lisa, are you, uh, can you hear us? I mean, I dialed in for some reason, I cannot get the computer audio. Um, is there a way for me, so I'm dialed in on the phone, which is fine. Is there a way for me to share my screen? Uh, Audra, there is. Audra, can you see if you can help her out, please? There it is. Looks like we may have lost her again. No, I'm I still here sure. on the audio. Um, okay. I think you have to accept the, the screen share. 
accept the screen share, okay? Down at the bottom, I believe, where it says screen. I am clicking on it. I apologize. Um, why don't you guys move, do your next agenda item, and I'll try to okay. connect here. All right, go ahead now, right. Mr. Valentine. Why don't you continue with where you left off? Sure. So uh, where I left off was um, this is very, this is preliminary. This is from our uh, previous request for a proposal for Monument Lake. Um, it is what it is, a few changes, but um, I wonder if council had the chance to take a look at it and if you have any suggestions things for staff. Let's go and get started uh, with uh, Mr. Goodall. Do you have any uh, any questions, any changes that you'd like to see incorporated into into the uh, proposal? Well, I definitely would like to see a few things changed with uh, reporting of financials for sure to set some deadlines, more stricter deadlines and maybe uh, to ensure that we could see the financial side of it. And I would like to see a setup for better inspection of the premises for us to guarantee we don't run into the same kind of problems we had this last time. And we had spoke and I, I would like to see it in this PDF or the proposal for the possibility of the restaurant in the resort side to be uh, split up, uh, we would entertain uh, a proposal that showed a joint venture um, to possibly so someone could go out and partner up to make it a little more manageable for somebody. Other than that, I think those were the three main things. And then I did see the bathhouse would it, in there, that's old from where the bathhouse would be closed. And definitely we have upgraded that and we're good on that, right? That is correct. Okay, I just, I seen that in there, but I knew that was an old one, so I figured that just hadn't been changed yet. So, other than that, I think that would cover the bases where we had our major issues. Um, that's all I have, Mayor. Okay. Uh, Ms. Grego, do you have any questions or anything that you would like to yes. change? No. I think Rusty's points are, are very well really good I think we need to do those but in addition to that I would like to recommend that we do a, at least a ten thousand dollar cash deposit damage deposit I think we need to do this on all the property that the city owns and leases out to private individuals um, that's I think that's imperative um, I can see where you mentioned the liability listing the uh, city as an additional insured and that that would guarantee that we get better notification when, if and when the insurance goes null and void or if it expires. Other than that, I we talked about that resort and restaurant being separate from the lake, but I don't know how economically feasible that would be for the person that leases i don't know if they could make a living just off the one entity make a living off the park and then and then let somebody else make the money on the resort and the restaurant but what i think when we start putting these rfps out here that whoever we get has some type of experience in the hospitality business um we can't get somebody in there not knowing what the logistics of the business is. And then if you don't mind, I'll take it, over. I'll send it to Frank on the other side of the table here. Okay. Mr. Shu, do you have any questions? Uh, no, I just got a couple of uh, points here. I, I had talked to Mike Valentine a while back about maybe uh, a couple things added to this uh, deal here for attraction of the uh, Monument Lake. Uh, that was the uh, uh, like I said years ago, uh, Smith Reservoir and uh, Eagle's Nest were really big fishing areas, and, and the reason they drew that, our, our lake is much a better area, was because of the bigger fish. I, I would like to see us stock that lake with much bigger fish for attraction to draw fishermen to go up there. 
Uh, I know the state stocks it with the smaller fish, but when you get larger trout and stuff, you're going to get more people to go in there. And I also see like to have something done with the, uh, and, I, and I don't know how we could do it, but I'd maybe replace the monument with something, uh, uh, a statue, a rock, or something to bring it back up. After all, it's named Monument Lake, and we don't, the monument fell in. And we'd, I'd like to see if we could do something to work on getting that better. Uh, I, do, you, do you remember our conversation, Mike, when I had with you that? I do. I do, sir. So I, I don't know if those would be implemented in here or something that would be on our track later if the council would be, a, you know, a, in favor of that. But I think what we need to do is get something added attraction to draw people up there. I mean, it's a great place to draw people, but if, if we give them something to, to really look forward to, and I think the fishing part would be a great deal for it. And that's basically it. No, just repeating the other stuff that Rusty and Karen said. Okay. Mr. DeBono? You're muted. Kelsey, sorry. Uh, just to piggyback on what Rusty kind of touched on, uh, maybe just keep some more frequent updates uh, on the condition of the premise in the area by maybe weekly or bi-monthly uh, inspections. That's pretty much it. Okay. Uh, I see where Ms. Ogletree, you're, you're on now. We're on item two, which is the Monument Lake Resort. Yes, I'm sorry it was late. I was driving back from Colorado Springs and I got here as quickly as I could. Um, I have a lot of input on it. I'm sorry I missed the other uh, council people's um, person's input uh, and I will make sure I circle back. Um, some of what I had was pretty technical in terms of the way this um, proposal is set up, but I think just from a philosophic point of view, I think that what I would like to see in it is a, a better job of, of selling it to the applicants as and explaining what it is that we want from them from a, a background point of view, um, qualification, what, how they're going to make money, uh, a description of the premise that premises that make sense. As I read through this, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense if you've never been there and are trying to decide whether this is something you're interested in doing, we could do a better job in saying, here's here's what this resort is all about. Here, it's this many acres. It includes a lake that you have use of. Um, so I, I just was, there are a lot of stylistic things that I don't like about the proposal that we used the last time around. And I think some of that is why we ended up in the situation that we did and it not being a successful um, job that our, our last uh, applicant was able to do. So, but I can talk with, with Mike about those things. Personally, I don't need to take up all our time on those things, uh, but that was generally what I wanted to say. Uh, maybe a little clear if you're done. Are you done with Global Tree? Yes. Okay. A uh, little, uh, little clarification. Uh, in there, there is some acreage numbers that are in the uh, proposal. I'm not sure if you saw that. I did the see that. that. The other thing that uh, I think that we requested the last time, even though it's not listed, was a pro forma, which would be good to have so that uh, uh, we can review, like I said, as to how they're going to be able to operate. Uh, you know, they're how they're going to, like you said, how are they going to make the money? And, and so a pro forma is good to have, which we did get the last time, and we did review that. Uh, Mr. Valentine, it, do we get crossways in any way if we were to either ask the CPW to put bigger fish in, or if we were to, of course, I'm not sure if we could afford putting bigger fish in, uh, that would be something that I think it's a good idea that Mr. Shu brought up. But I think that's uh, something maybe we can you know, look into a little bit more. Uh, you know, the $10,000 damage deposit that Ms. Uh, uh, Grego said I think is probably a good thing. The one thing that uh, we ran into, and I don't know if they were supposed to report at the end of the year or if it was on a monthly basis, where that uh, $2.50 uh, 
which was to go back into uh, some of in, into the uh, was that done was that supposed to have been done on a monthly basis or at, at the end of the business year? Actually, uh, Mayor, I believe the the agreement encapsulated that, and I don't think I could be wrong. I don't think it specified when. I think it was at the end of the year. Um, or to when they needed to spend the money, they had to confer with the city manager at the time to uh, to approve the the projects or improvements they were going to do. Um, so I don't know for certain, but uh, the agreement as it was drawn up basically followed this RFP. Um, the fish, I don't know. We have an agreement with uh, the car parks and wildlife for them to stock that. I don't know if they will stock bigger fish for us. I, I, Mr. Shu talked to me about that. I haven't checked with them. Um, or we uh, actually have to purchase bigger fish and and uh, and stock them ourselves. Um, as far as insurance, we were named additionally insured on all of these, on, on the last one also, but the um, insurance company never sent us renewals. They do sometimes, some of them don't. Um, so we that dropped out on us. Um, um, as far as the area and uh, uh, the... I think the RFP, or not I think, I know the RFP um, has a map that shows the area that includes uh, Monument Lake and the, the, all the cabins and their location and everything. So that would be helpful in this packet and we'll include that. Um, I know that the legal description there is definitely that, a legal description. Uh, has a, you know, meets and bounds in the northeast border of the southeast border. So the map will be helpful there. Um, and I think, uh, hopefully I answered all those your questions. I guess the, the question going back to is uh, that monthly filing, you know, if, if, if that would be something we want to do and if they want to remit their, you know, on a monthly basis, we could put in an escrow account of some kind to uh, be able to use it as needed. Uh, the last thing, and I don't know, Les, you might want to uh, talk about this if it's doable or not um, you know one of the problems that we had is that uh, this last uh, person that we had at the end of the uh, when they seized operations uh, we did not know if there were any outstanding reservations and in the event that uh, you know, the, the lease is terminated for any reason that if they have taken any leases for the following year that we need to know uh, what the, who those leases are to, if they've been paid. Uh, so I think that that would be something, I'm not sure how we could handle that. Les, but can you maybe talk about that, please? Well, Mayor, it was kind of a, uh, a perfect storm in, in terms of how that happened, but I think maybe what we could do is if we had an agreement to have like joint operation of the website, or at least have access to the website. As I understand a lot of that, the, the prior tenant had his own website so that when he left, he was able to, you know, to take that away and we were not able to track and therefore we're not able to, to honor the, the reservations that were uh, still outstanding and in fact, um, were still being made. I. I would also defer to, to Mike and Audrey. I think that's um, part of what happened. So maybe if we had in the lease agreement, <clears throat> excuse me, some you know kind of provision that we agree either to joint operation of the website or that we be given access so that we know um, if there is a sudden or abrupt termination of the landlord-tenant relationship um, that we can still track and monitor and honor any outstanding reservation. I, I, I think that, that is a good idea. And I I have a, a couple of other thoughts, but I'll let you finish, Mayor. 
I, uh, actually, no, I don't I want to add on. No, actually, I was done. That was all I had. So if you want to continue. Okay, well, well, thank you. And I, I did want to say, you know, to the, the earlier points about um, separating out the, the restaurant and the bar, all of these things have um, relative merits and, and obligations so that it was, it was kind of easier for us, I think, if we kept it all together. And it's also a benefit to them, as somebody touched on, that it may be more of a money maker if they do have the restaurant in a liquor license. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry. But it's also good for us because we don't have to find someone to not only manage the resort and the cabins and all that, and then we also have to find somebody to manage um, the restaurant and the bar. So it just was easier if it was all one package, um, if that makes sense. I will say that I think w we can easily also, you know, have a reservation in there that we as the landlord want to reserve the right to reasonable inspections. And that is, you know, upon 24 hour notice, we're going to have somebody go out there. And I think when it's going well, there's nothing, there's nothing that we like better that it just think, well, everything is going well there, so we don't have a need to go look around, right? You, but anyway, that's a digression. And I, you know, I'm sorry for you know sharing. Uh, you're thinking out loud. The ten thousand dollar deposit, I think, is also a good idea. It's just that most of the people that have come before council have said, well, I don't it was like the last one. It was kind of like I don't have a lot of money. Um, and it's going to cost me a lot of money to get the liquor license in my name, to get the, you know, all the supplies for the restaurant. That that's kind of a minor point, um, also. But the insurance, also, last thing in that is, yes, have us be an additional insured, but we may want to have regular, um, and, and you know, the, the same thing as the uh, reasonable inspection of the premises. Also, be allowed to look at the books and, and have them you know, have to show us, you know, whether or not they're making a profit on a, on a reasonable, uh, you know, basis, like a monthly basis, and then also proof of insurance. So I'm sorry, I'm not really contributing anything, but I think we can have provisions for all those things to protect the city, kind of from what happened last time. You know, uh, one Thank thing you. that Greg was talking about, getting two different, you know, uh, someone to operate the restaurant, someone to operate the actual resort, and I, I don't know if it's in the agreement where we make it easier if they want to sublet uh, the restaurant out. I'm not sure if it's in there or not, but that if they if, if do have to put something in there so that uh, they know that if they want to sublet the restaurant out, that would, that would be up to them, of course. Or at least we would know. Well, and they would have to do a transfer. Go ahead, Mike. I'm sorry. Yeah, but I, I believe there there is provisions in there for that. Here's here's part of uh, what I'm hearing over the past two operators is they're so far away from town that it's hard to keep help up there. So um, if you have two entities looking to hire the same help, uh, part of the I guess carrot for some of the help is that the lodge offers cabins to some of the workers and keeps them, keeps them uh, available there. So um, I think with some creative uh, RFP writing, I think we're talking a lot of um, agreement type stuff. Um, I think the RFP um, has to be as Ms. Ogletree explained, kind of a, a selling point um, when we get down to the brass tacks before. And I think what I, I want to do when we get to that agreement part is actually identify someone. We have two people up in our treatment facilities up there. Rather than always reporting to the city manager, give them the authority to be there on site and, and inspect and then have them report so that we get quicker response back and forth. Um, so those are my thoughts. Anyway. Okay. Okay. Uh, this Rusty, do you have, uh, you have your hand up? 
I do, and you know, something popped in my head. We um, allocate out of the marijuana money every year through requests from the Parks and Rec Advisory Board for them to stock fish into the river. And it seems like we, Howard was able to um, get like uh, $4 a pound on a thousand pounds of fish, and they were larger fish to stock the river. So I think for a pretty nominal amount we could look at possibly and those are all larger fish no small fish in that stocking so as we move forward and look at allocating some of this rainy day fund that may be something we look at to boost monument lake is uh, allocating a little bit of that money possibly for stocking of some larger fish a couple of times a year that'd be a pretty small investment if it and in one year we could see the payoff if it did bring in the fishermen Okay. Okay. Does anyone else? Uh, it seems like the the screens are pretty froze. I'm not sure what's going on. Um, Councilwoman Ogletree is waving her hand there. Yeah. I, like I said, all the screens are froze, so I can't see when people are waving hands. Go ahead, Mr. Ogletree. Thank you. I I didn't know whether you all had discussed what sort of qualifications we were going to put in this RFP. If the one that we have here is very vague about what we're saying. And I think um, given all the attention that Trinidad is getting uh, lately statewide and regionally, um, that we can expect some good applicants. And I think we need to put that in there that we are looking for people. I would hope that we're looking for people who have operated some kind of a hospitality um, business in the past and know what they're doing and aren't gonna jump into this massive operation without experience. I, I think that's going to be really critical. Okay. Anybody else? I like said I can't see anybody raising their hands because my free my screen is froze. I'm not sure what's going on. If not, uh, let's go ahead and move on. Circle back to line one. Uh, Lisa Streisfeld from the Colorado Department of Transportation regarding vehicle emissions research. Lisa, can you try to click on to see if we can see your screen? So you should be able to hear me. Um... Yes. And now see me, good. And then Audra was going to give me permission to share my screen. Excellent, there it goes. There you go. Wonderful. <clears throat> Just a little bit of background, uh, Ms. Streisfield, before we get started. Uh, Ms. Streisfield, uh, you know, she presented uh, to the uh, uh, Southwest Chief Commission a couple of months ago and I thought it would be really important to try to get the word out about the emissions uh, research that they have done, which is really important, something that we are looking at uh, with the Southwest Chief and Front Range Passenger Rail to try to at least uh, cut back in the near future some of the emissions with all the vehicle traffic that we have. So that's the reason why I asked Ms. Streisfeld if she would give a presentation. So Ms. Streisfeld, go ahead, take it from there, please. Great, thank you so much for having me. Um, I work for CDOT. I've been with the department for 17 years. I'm currently working in our Office of Innovative Mobility, and I've been helping out on Front Range Passenger Rail. Um, I worked with several of our staff members and interns to do an emission comparison by travel mode. So um, we had Colorado House Bill 1261. That was the Climate Action Plan. And that set some goals for Colorado to reduce emissions. Um, and by 2005 levels, we're supposed to reduce that by 2025 by 26%, um, reduce those emissions by 50% by 2030, and then 90% by 2050. And again, this is because of the Climate Action Plan and it really relates to a lot of the fires you're seeing and the flooding down south. And then um, my interns put this scary cloud of um, the different types of greenhouse gas emissions. And those include carbon dioxide, um, methane, nitrogen oxide, uh, hydrofluorocarbons, perfluorocarbons, um, nitrogen trifluorides, and sulfur hexafluorides. And um, I did look up just for 
in for people's information on um, the perfluorocarbons that's often in semiconductors and aluminum production um, the sulfur hexafluorides that can be everything from semiconductors to torpedoes to nike shoes um, the nitrogen trifluorides those come up when we produce liquid liquid crystal displays and semiconductors so again these are just emissions that we're also seeing as well as carbon dioxide which and methane and nitrogen oxide those typically come from transportation so the goals of our research we wanted to figure out which mode of transportation had the lowest emissions per passenger vehicle mile traveled so we looked at diesel trains electric trains internal combustion engine cars those are gas power cars that we all drive and we looked at electric cars, and that would be like your Nissan Leaf or your Tesla. We looked at electric buses, and then we looked at internal combustion engine or diesel buses. So this metric, what do I mean by emissions per passenger vehicle mile? And so we wanted to put this into a common denominator. So it's the amount of carbon emissions if a person took a one mile trip. So we compared that one mile trip, whether the person was on a diesel train, an electric train, a gas car, or an electric car. And then that makes it really easy for us to calculate emissions for a 10 mile trip versus a 100 mile trip, um, because we look at the emissions for one person to be able to move one mile. So what our research methods, what we did was we looked at studies from all over the world. We looked at studies from our own environmental protection agency from Japan, uh, studies from Spain, Britain, South Korea, and we looked at the average rate of emissions for those different kinds of vehicles. Then we also looked at our Colorado portfolio of how do we make energy. Um, we went down to the fact that, you know, we have wind energy and hydroelectric energy and coal energy. And so that really accounts for the fact that even though we're using an electric train or electric car, um, there's still emissions. But certainly as we increase our renewable portfolio and use more wind and hydroelectric and solar, that emissions is definitely going to go down um, even more. We also did an assumption that a passenger train would carry 300 people, and we know that passenger vehicles carry up to eight people. Um, for our study, the average vehicle occupancy in Colorado is about 1.3 passengers per car. We also assumed that a bus typically has around 50 passengers, and we assumed that it would be three quarters occupancy. So that way we had some realistic assumptions in our comparison. Then we looked at, okay, well, how does Colorado make energy? And this data comes from um, the U.S. Energy Information Administration. Um, Colorado right now, our portfolio, about 30% of our energy comes from coal, 31% natural gas, um, about 5% from hydro, and then non-hydro renewables like solar, um, that would be 34%. So the general finding, and I'll get into more detail though, is that the electric bus actually has the least amount of emissions. And that's based on um, per passenger vehicle mile traveled. Um, a diesel powered train produces the fewer emissions than the internal combustion engine car or an electric car. However, the electric bus overall has the fewest emissions. Um, electric trains and internal combustion engine buses produce less than diesel trains. So basically the most amount of emissions would be an internal combustion engine car and I've got a really nice um, figure for you guys. But again, the electric vehicle bus per passenger mile really produces the least amount of emissions. Here's that figure I was showing you about. So we basically converted this to pounds of carbon dioxide and um, you can see at the very bottom that turquoise color, the internal combustion engine car per passenger vehicle miles traveled, it's about 0.6 pounds of carbon. Versus if we look at um, an electric car like your Tesla, that's 0.29, but it gets way better with um, diesel trains and electric trains. Now you're getting down to 0.2 and 0.1, and that's because you're just putting more people 
Um, but the least amount really was the electric bus, and that's 0.08. So you can see the, the difference, and that's just because we're getting a lot of people in um, that vehicle. We also looked at you know, the emission comparisons based on the number of passengers. So if you look at these colors, um, a full bus is that navy blue. Um, the three-quarter full bus, which is about 38 passengers, which you mentioned, that's that royal blue, and that was the color, or that was the occupancy that I mentioned. So again, electric buses produce the least amount of emissions, no matter how many people are riding. So even if we have a quarter of the bus full or a full bus, we're still getting lower emissions than an electric car, which is um, that orange line or the yellow line, which is um, an internal combustion engine car. So basically, buses are doing really well with emissions. Next slide. So the electric buses, it's a great alternative, but they're not highly used right now. There's a lot of issues with um, how long they take to charge and their range. Um, also, electric buses are not great when it gets really cold, and they're not so great when um, there's a lot of grade differences where it has to go uphill and downhill. But in general, like on the flat, an electric bus definitely has the least amount of emissions. But electric and diesel trains, those are doing way better on emissions compared to an electric car or um, a car. So another thing I just wanted to re-emphasize, you know, the more people you put in the vehicle, the better your efficiency goes up. So that's why, you know, buses and trains also do much better. But again, their engines still are efficient. So basically to reiterate, electric trains they produce fewer emissions than diesel, train, diesel trains, but the um, technology is still evolving, and so we expect that that'll go better. Um, additionally, as Colorado converts to more renewable energy, the emissions for all the electric vehicles will definitely go down. Um, for right now, our engineers are telling us that the electric train systems are more expensive to build than um, a regular diesel train. Basically, they're giving me the estimate that construction costs could be an extra three to five million dollars per mile to build. Um, that equi that's equivalent to about a 40% increase. So another thing I just wanted you guys to be aware of is that you know these assumptions on emissions with electric vehicle, that's based on our portfolio today. As technology changes, um, emissions will definitely go down, you know, with the, whether your internal combustion engine or electric vehicle, they're all going to get better and better. Similarly, similarly, as our electric power grid shifts to more renewables to hydro and solar and wind, that also will help decrease emissions from electric cars and electric trains. So the, the news is good. Um, I also wanted you to know that no technology has been chosen yet for front range passenger rail. They could use a diesel powertrain initially and then later switch to an electric system because the rail will be the same, it's just the car that might change. Um, also, as we use more renewables, overall emissions are going to decrease. During the NEPA process, that's when we do the environmental impact statement on the 180 mile quarter for rail. Um, we're going to look at a lot of factors when we decide on what to build. And we're going to look at safety, we're going to look at travel time and costs, emissions, economic development, also the cost for infrastructure capital and maintenance and operations. So although you know we're definitely seeing that electric trains have better emissions, we haven't chosen a technology yet and we're going to consider all five factors I've listed there. So that's what I have, and um, I'm very grateful for your time and happy to answer any questions. Hey, Lisa, one thing I wanted you to mention, uh, that you, you, you brought it to our attention, the amount of emissions that was emitted, I think it was on a daily basis or a monthly basis. Uh, do you have that in front of you? Um, I do not. I think that was Eric's presentation um, okay. I can ha I'd be happy to get that for you this is emissions per passenger miles traveled um, 
you're looking for emissions for the whole like if we ran 25 trains how many emissions that would be well with the, the the it was the pounds of emissions that were emitted on i think a daily basis on the i-25 corridor i think is what uh, he had if you can find that then maybe send it to us i'd be happy to i know eric has that in his presentation um and you know you have to remember like the i-25 corridor has you know probably you know 90 to 100 thousand vehicles a day probably in some places it just depends it's more it's denser of course in denver than it is in pueblo but um i will get that from eric for you guys and definitely we can get some good data uh, i don't know if anybody has any questions mr goodall do you have any questions for Ms. Bryceville? i don't have anything thank you very much for the presentation though Ms. grego do you have any questions no questions, but a lot of good information. I'll give it to Frank since I've got the mic on. Uh, no, I don't have any questions either. Thank you. How about Mr. DeBono? Uh, yes, Lisa, do the uh, diesel train, uh, part of the diesel process, does it have the same four main pollutants as a regular diesel engine from a truck, like the carbon monoxide, the nitrogen oxide, the hydrocarbons and the particulate matter? Because when it's combusted, it's, it doesn't it, form like a, a source of atmospheric suit, which is implicated in like cancer? I don't know about the cancer causing agents. Um, I do have the details on another spreadsheet and I didn't bring that with me today, but I'm happy to share that with you, which shows the composition of the emissions of the diesel train. And um, that would be similar to like a diesel bus emissions as well it's the same kind of engine but um for the particulates that you're mentioning it will give you a breakdown of what's in that and i'm happy to send that over to um phil rico as well yeah go ahead and get that to us uh any, sure. other, questions? Yeah, uh, any other questions um mr Duvall? no thank you thank you mr mayor okay, Ms. ogletree Thank you. Um, I had just had a, I was curious, um, I had been under the impression that the front rail would be using existing rail um, that's in place. And you mentioned that uh, an electric train is 40% more um, construction cost. So I'm just, is, is it long-term intended to change a route and not use the rail that's on the ground now? The alignment alternative has not been chosen. There is definitely an alternative where it is looking at using existing rail. There's other alignments that they're considering which would be um, on, on new alignment. So that definitely impacts costs. So I couldn't tell you one way or the other, but if we do an electric train, there's just more infrastructure costs. You have to get um, the charging technology and then the vehicles themselves are more expensive as well. So it's not, it's the electric energy and it's the actual vehicle. Um, but no, an alignment hasn't been selected and certainly the alignment will drive some of those cost changes as well. So you're, you picked up on that exactly. All right, well, thank uh, you so much. Something else that was brought up at this, at that commission meeting um, that there, some technology one technology that they're actually beginning to look at is battery technology for trains of course that's probably down in the future but uh, it's something that uh, they are looking into at this point in time uh, going over uh, like rat tone pass uh, might be an issue we don't know but that's a technology that's being looked at and the reason why i wanted Ms. Streisfeld to uh, do this presentation as we know that uh, you know trinidad is now kind of on um, our counties, we're on the map uh, with the number of possible people that will be moving into the area and visiting the area. Uh, there's going to be a lot of different movement and, you know, uh, uh, passenger cars, passenger buses, possibly emission issues. And that's, of course, on everyone's mind. So I just wanted her to be able to give us an idea as to what we're looking at and, and what's the most cost effective with the least amount of emissions, because I know that is something that is on pretty much everyone's mind today. So, uh,
that's the reason for the presentation. So, uh, Mr. Greisfeld, thank you for your presentation, and uh, uh, hopefully that uh, it helped council understand uh, what the commission is doing as well. Thank you so much for your time. Get to item three, which is the third quarter marijuana sales discussion, and uh, we'll turn that over to we'll turn that over to. Yes. Yes. Cheryl, Cheryl, are you on? Yes. <laughs> well, Cheryl is getting that set up. Um, I don't know if council this was put in the uh, in the Google Drive, and I also. Fascinating. All righty. Um, there's only one change to the sales tax collected. We received the one and a half percent from the state today. So that increased September sales tax by $1,940. Um, that's the only change. Uh, you'll see that I've broken it down by city projects at 65% outside agencies at 5% and then the rainy day fund at 30. Mm -hmm. um, and so those categories are broken out for you. The amount we'll be talking about today are the city projects, the $998,361. And you can see the list that staff has uh, is requesting. Um, of course, the, the truck payment or the ladder truck payment is um, it is a, is a given. That's something that was agreed to um, when we made the purchase of the vehicle. And then we have our ADO uh, demolition. Uh, the horticulture budget, we are asking to appropriate it now versus first quarter or even fourth quarter because by the time it's approved by council, um, Karen misses the window of purchasing those flowers that need to be available by the beginning of the spring. And then after that, there's just a bunch of other little uh, requests. Um, oh, one other item is the sick leave and the or the sick leave accrual transfer. That one hundred thousand dollars is going to make us um, one hundred percent compliant with the liability. Mm -hmm. So that that's really good news. It took us three years mm -hmm. to get there, and we have every right. single fund uh, the liability covered. So that's good news. I was going to ask you Are there about any that. questions? Let's go ahead and get started with Mr. Goodall. I don't have any questions. I think it looks pretty good, and that is great news about the sick leave uh, curls liability transfer. Um, other than that, I think everything looks pretty good. Ms. Grego? I have a thank you, Cheryl. You did a as always a fantastic job. I just need to ask you a question on the sick leave. So from from this day forward, we will be able, we're gonna be solid with that, right? We won't be in a deficit anymore, is that correct? That's correct. Um, I believe we have 805,000 in the investment account right now. And at the end of 2019's audit, our balance um, our required liability, or um, excuse me, our liability was nine hundred and one thousand. So this one hundred thousand is going to get us to where we need to be. Okay, and then we'll continue making sure that that fund never, never goes in the red again, right? <laughs> well, not in the red. That's correct. You know. As we draw down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, as we draw yeah. down, we'll draw out of the investment. If we increase it, we'll increase the investment, but at least. This is a workable figure now, and you know we don't need hundreds of thousands to make ourselves solid. It's going to be you know five to ten thousand. Okay. And then the utilities are, are just already that? covered. Their liability got covered first year. 
I remember I, I'm almost positive I asked you this the last time we went through there. But with some of the surplus funds we have from the marijuana money, it's not feasible or wise to try and pay down that fire truck, is it? You mentioned it. I think you said something about low to no interest. Or, is that correct? Uh, n no, I, I believe we can pay the debt sooner. Um, we could get a penalty, a little bit of penalty on the interest, but the getting it paid off sooner is always um, a better idea. Is it is it a good idea, or would you prefer to keep it as is? I I would rather get it paid down. Um, I remember what you were asking about. You had asked about paying down the sewer, um, the loan against for the sewer uh, department was the one that there was an, a significant penalty. We had to go all the way through to the end. But no, paying off okay. the fire truck now is a really good idea. Okay. Well, I think maybe we better think about that. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I think we'll look at that and, and report back to council on uh, savings versus uh, paying off and, and or continuing. I don't know how many more payments we have, Cheryl. Um, but we'll, we'll get a report to council. Um, we have... We have two more payments after this, um, and the total is 279000 So that's kind of doable, huh? Yes, it is. We could possibly do it in the fourth quarter. Okay. Are we going to make suggestions now, or are we just asking questions? Uh, we're just asking questions right now. Uh, unless there's something real specific that you had, you know, that one there was pretty specific. Is there any questions uh, specific to any of these others that you had, Ms. Bagel? I just, the brush hog, is that for the river? Yes. Or is that for, okay. Is there, is that just oh, one machine or two? Uh, I'll, I'll answer that. That is, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so we've been uh, back and forth with this brush hog and we've been uh, working with um, equipment companies that uh, you know specialize in their own equipment and that is for um, what's called a flail motor that fits on so we can do side slopes and such this uh, brush hog is three pieces of equipment um, one okay. is a uh, skid steer loader with tracks on it so we can go down into the river bottom without getting stuck. It's got the, the rubber tracks on it. And then it has an attachment for taking care of uh, uh, invasive species in the trees that are large for the mower. It'll actually, uh, it's called a flat, and it'll actually just go in there spin it down and you can mulch a you know six inch tree down to mulch so okay all righty okay. thank you no i have no questions uh mr shu do you have any questions i i think you did a good job on that my no questions at all thank you okay mr DeBono. Uh, Cheryl, just uh, to, can you elaborate just a bit, a tad, on the ADO demolitions and what that entails? Um, actually, is it okay that I defer to you, Audra? Audra pretty much handles this with um, the with the city inspector. Sure. Um, so, between Kent Robinson, our building inspector, and Anthony Haddo, our code enforcement officer, they refer different um, properties for cleanup or, well, primarily cleanup, either weeds or um, junk accumulation. And so we use that, that money to um, remedy the issues and then file liens against the property. 
same with um, properties that actually have to be demolished. Same, that money is used for that purpose, and it's it's actually been a very effective and um, I think beneficial program the whole way through. So I would recommend continuation of that money being allocated. Okay. For clarification, also ADO stands for anti-dilapidation ordinance that was passed so that we could uh, have some teeth in um, houses that were, you know, uh, not being taken care of with broken windows, uh, roofs falling down. Um, so this kind of backs up that ordinance. Okay, anti-dilapidation ordinance, okay. Correct. Any other questions, Mr. Devon? No, sir, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Ms. Ogletree. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, the engineering traffic study, what will that be about? What is that for? Sure. So uh, with all the impacts that, are, that we're seeing um, with anticipated growth and, and Fisher's Peak and, and everything, uh, we haven't done a traffic study to study traffic patterns, parking, um, the whole gamut, um, you know, arterial streets within our city and uh, collector streets. Um, so that would be to perform that study to identify, identify uh, problem areas or where we think we can put money. It will also help with uh, with having this study um, granting requests when they when we start asking for uh, you know monies for uh, enhancing roadways and such. So um, my hope is that we can use this and leverage uh, more dollar money to uh, get a study that encapsulates all that. Okay, so we're going to um, broaden it out beyond that with, with the money. Is that what you're saying? I'm sorry, uh, you broke up there. So we're going to broaden the scope of it with additional money from DOLA, you're hoping? Is that what you're saying? That's the hope. I'm going I'm to request that. But um, uh, this traffic study was at the request of uh, council a while back and um, you know, things are happening, New Alf Mine, Fisher's Peak, I think we need to get this done soon, more sooner than later. And can it, can it be done as soon as, as uh, when do you expect the timeline on this to happen? I guess that's what I'm curious about. The study. Um, if council approves, well, so, um, as soon as possible, uh, our public works director is, is moving on and we, we've interviewed, uh, and this is key to public works, and hopefully within three weeks to a month, we'll have uh, someone on board and we'll be, already have been working on, on the RFP, because this will have to go out to uh, request for proposal to engineering firms. Thank you. That's what I had. Okay. Uh, a question for our an answer for maybe Mr. DeBono, uh, being that you just came on the council recently. Uh, in the uh, budget on a yearly basis, we have been uh, budgeting, I think it's $100,000 per year uh, for the ADO, and uh, we've been incrementally using all this uh, marijuana money to help fund that. So that's uh, something that we've done. Um, and I think I, I, the uh, traffic study and uh, Ms. Ogletree mentioned about a timeline. Mike, you also mentioned that uh, may be able to tie uh, some of this into the DOLA infrastructure possibility of what, what that study is going to involve. So uh, it, it might add to it. I'm not really sure how that's going to work until we find out what's in the scope of that. 
that grant. And I think we'll probably find out this month sometime. Am I correct uh, on that grant, Mr. Valentine? Yes, uh, DOLA is currently uh, in their review process, their peer review. Uh, we will, well, they'll, they'll uh, have their hearings uh, virtually, of course, and then uh, we should be finding out um, first part of December, and then, then we'll get a grant award letter should we be successful. So, December. Okay, great. You know, I really am glad to see, and I've been talking to Mike uh, for some time about that brush hog because it'll allow us to uh, go down to that river bottom and get, get that bottom cleaned up, which, uh, you know, we if you really look at things, we have uh, three things going on in the community, and this is the river bottom is the third leg of, I think, the one of the uh, amenities that we have. You know, of course, we have the Space Great project. Uh, we have the Fisher's Peak, and we can also now... Uh, do something hopefully in the near future start working on the river the river walk uh, so we'll have a kind of a three-leg uh, amenity for people that want to come to uh, visit the community and this brush hog will help to be able to clean it up much quicker than what we've been doing in the past which uh, I know that uh, the lady that's been from the uh, good work at but she's been working on it, but she's been using manual labor on it, and this will help her tremendously to get that up and running uh, much quicker. Uh, the other question that I had is that uh, true narc uh, and narcotics testing machine, is that the one, Mike, that uh, came out in the newspaper the other day? That is correct, Mayor. Uh, this is to backfill that. Uh, um, that's already been purchased, and it's already... Uh, proven very uh, positive in, in identifying uh, and getting real evidence for the DA's office to prosecute. It um, happens right on site, the testing machine sold. Yeah. Well, I, I, I really believe that. You know, we've, been, we've been making some huge inroads into helping the police department and helping fund some necessary items that they need to have and this is just one more against the uh, narcotics issue that we have locally here and it's well known with all of the uh, busts that they have been making here lately so uh, whatever investments we have made have been very well worth it so uh, kudos to uh, staff and uh, police department for uh, what they've been doing. Um, see if I had anything else and then I'm glad to see that we're up to stuff now with the uh, uh, was that the hundred thousand dollars for sick leave accruals uh, been looking at that since I've been on on, on council it's good to see that we're finally there to where we're able to say yay. It's, it's good to see uh, so I, I think we're okay with everything unless council has any other questions concerning the uh, that item anybody else I have anything? Can, yeah. I Go do, ahead. Mayor. Go ahead. So my question is, we've been putting aside that 100000 a year into the ADO account. I was curious if Cheryl has a number on what the balance on that account is sitting at. How, how much of that are we using? Well, she's looking that up. I, Give me a I, I, Right. Um, I will say that uh, we've had to kind of curtail uh, Mr. Robinson going to all these homes and such and doing the inspections due to COVID, but um, we, we're, we're continuing to try and move forward with that. You know, I'm not sure what counts, but you know, this ADO is, is a is. I think it's very critical that we try to continue to do something, and we need to look also at uh, if there's any commercial properties out there that we need to get done with that. So maybe if there's a build, build up of uh, some funding to be able to take care of maybe some commercial property. Uh, down to Mike specifically on one uh, downtown, and uh, we need to maybe try to do something with it, but I'm not going to mention at this point who it is. Right. <laughs> part of that is Mike now that if, if we've demoed some of these properties and we put liens on them and acquired them 
are we getting any closer to offering them back out to um, contractors to build um, on these properties to start backfilling some of these empty lots? Or are we not acquiring the properties we put liens on? Actually, we are not acquiring the properties. Uh, we just put the liens on them. We've uh, we're working through it with TSJC to try and remedy that uh, with their new program and, and not demo these so that we don't have any uh, just weed lots now. Um, we will work with uh, contractors on these lots if they want, want to build and, and, you know, depending on, on incentives that we can come up with. but. Uh, we do not own any of these properties. We go in with our uh, anti-dilapidation ordinance and property maintenance code. And if um, property owners don't, you know, are absent or don't have the means to do to do anything, and uh, beyond repair we tear them down well we could surely there's got to be a way for us to with the housing shortage and everything else for these lots to be offered for contractors to have design codes to build to the character of neighborhoods to fill in these empty lots i mean it's a win-win in the housing shortage that we have and to get these properties built back up right right um and we could work on that, but not having uh, not having ownership, the contractors is going to have to work with the property owners. Correct. Um, but what I'm but, saying, if, could we provide a list uh, of those properties, possibly where they could contact owners? Or are we allowed to do that to give that information out? We could give a, a list of addresses, and through the county, I believe they can. Uh, follow through all right but, um, that's a good good thought and uh, we'll follow up with that part of the problem though if I may please interject sure. is that sure. part of the reason why they get uh, you know why we have to why we have to uh, abate the nuisance and tear the building down and do everything is because they're absentee property owners and we frequently can't get a hold of them and then we do what we do when we lean the property but uh, we we frequently. I mean, I, I don't know, but I don't think that we really know when the property owner gets back involved. If ever. So that's one of the reasons. And we don't wind up owning the properties because we don't want to be accused of either an unlawful taking or targeting properties that we would be accused of actually having wanted. So that we target those properties, and next thing you know, we're being for you know some kind of uh, conspiracy to, to to you know demo their property and, and take it but anyway I, I hope that helps a little well it does I just thought you know with the situation we're in with housing it might be a means for some contractors to get into some properties reasonable that have utilities to them that we could put design codes to be built to the character of the neighborhoods and start filling in lots and satisfy some housing shortages we have because i've had contractors ask me about this before and uh cheryl were you able to find them numbers yes in 2018 60,000 was allocated for demolition and 21,000 was spent and then in 2019, 100,000 was allocated and 73,000 was spent. Right. And then, like Mike said, 2020, we're, we're a little bit, um, we had to slow it down a little bit, but thus far we've spent 28,000 of, of, I believe, 50,000 that's been allocated. Cool. I just wanted to, you know, watch and make sure we don't get uh, heavy on that account with it sitting there, so... I just figured I'd check in case we had a situation where we needed money, it could be better spent to take a break from a quarter or something else, what would be available. Just personal knowledge for me. Thank you. Uh, you know, Mr. Goodall brought up a good question no about using, about finding those properties. And Mike, I don't know if that's something that 
if those properties could be found out which you know what properties might be available and uh and the college could would look into that uh, and then maybe they could talk to the owner and if there is an owner who is willing to either donate uh, the property back to the college for the purpose of rebuilding or something, that would be another possible avenue. Uh, I'm not sure who would want to do that, but there may be somebody out there. If there's a, an owner that is uh, out of the state that's not been here in years. So I think uh, that would be a possibility. So if uh, that that is in place now with Kent, um, if um, if he's able to get a hold of these people and they actually respond, um, we've, I've asked him to put them in touch with the the college because through the AD's uh, program, they do have some monies for purchase. So um, oh. it's in place. So hopefully it takes off. Good. Good. Uh, does council have any other questions? Okay, let's go ahead and move on to the item four nonprofit funding discussion. Uh, marijuana, <clears throat> excuse me, sales tax. Uh, Cheryl, do you want to cover that? Actually, Mayor, um, I think this is going to be actually between me and Audra um, and with okay. some council discussion. Um, our nonprofit uh, process for for funding has been arduous um, at best, and, and um, you know we've had the twenty five thousand dollar max. Then then it went down because everybody was asking twenty five thousand, and then um, the last time around we we took applications and. Um, Staff went through uh, a lot of staff time vetting them and, and putting together a spreadsheet for, for council, and then um, it, it went totally different. So uh, I just want to have a discussion and uh, how we can improve improve this. Um, and I don't know if Audra wants to jump in and add anything, or even Cheryl, but uh, Audra? So the last round that we had, um, there was significant staff time spent on vetting those applications and um, trying to apply the criteria and then putting forth information to city council so that council could make an informed decision on where to go with funding. And in the end, um, where we were supposed to be um, giving the money to nonprofits for projects or programs, it actually ended up to just go towards operating expenses. Now, that being said, it was during a time where COVID was just at its onset, and I think it would have been difficult for city council to do anything otherwise, but it gave us a chance to see how the application process would have been applied and it felt a little bit flawed in some ways. Um, it kind of reminded me of the, the days when city council would have um, pre practically all day presentations from the nonprofit groups where council would have to hear the presentation and then decide how to allocate the funds. And um, there was a lot of duplication of services that were, were being presented to city council. I think I think what we have right now with respect to funding the, the nonprofits through the budget and then the remaining balance being submitted to um, the community foundation for their vetting is a better process in the end. Um, they, I hate to say this, have a little bit more time than staff and city council has to do that process. And they're very, very good at following up with respect to um, all of the documentation that has to be submitted. That would be where I would recommend city council go with with respect to funding. And or you pull back the amount of funding that's given to nonprofits. Um, you know, we've had internal conversations with um, 
staff and you know Cheryl having worked at, worked in New Mexico she, New Mexico doesn't even legally allow government agencies to fund nonprofits so um, I think council needs to just revisit that subject in its entirety and decide what the best process is going forward so that it's equitable and it's um, it doesn't become a burden on staff or city council to, pro to provide nonprofit with nonprofits with the funding. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and make a recommendation and see what, and then we'll get to council if council doesn't mind. Is that I think that we take this particular item on a future work session, maybe the next work session, where we could dig into it a little bit deeper, give time uh, to council to uh, think about what, you know, I think Audra just made some very good points and uh, that we look into it probably at the, we're, we're the next work session uh, in more depth. Uh, so with that, uh, starting with Mr. Goodall, if you have any other recommendations. Mayor, that's the exact recommendation I would have made that this seems like we need to revisit this in a work session and get this hashed out and make a uh, better plan that's less burdensome on our staff and, and figure this out if we're going to fund nonprofits or a better way to fund them if we're going to. I think that's an excellent idea for a work session. Okay. Ms. Grego? Well, I've, I've had issues with this money going to nonprofits. I'm, I'm not opposed to, to supporting nonprofits, but I think it's been a good, it was a good idea gone bad. And I know we're going to discuss it at a work session, but I think in addition to the money, you, you know, like um, Rusty said and, and Audra said, the amount of time the staff works on these things horrendous and there's so many other things going on in Trinidad. I highly recommend we go that direction. Yeah, I, I agree with we should do it on another work session. No use repeating everything. So I agree with going into another work session. How about Mr. DeBone? Uh no not really. I just maybe I had a an interest in something I just thought of maybe for Aaron or, or Les. Uh, does the Colorado 501c3 uh, nonprofit uh, application process, does that have to go be approved by a CPA firm? I don't believe there's any uh, requirement that a, a 501c3 application has to be approved by a CPA. Okay, I, just, I don't believe I just, so. I was just wondering. Yeah, I, I don't believe so. Maybe Councilman Ogletree or something like that, but um, I, I don't think that is a requirement. Uh, in, a requirement in, in the application process, then? That's correct. I, I don't believe that is required in, in any way. Okay. Okay. Ms. Ogletree? Ms. Ogletree? I, I, I was curious about Audra's comment about New Mexico, that there's some legal issue, so I would want if there is any legal issue that we should be aware of, I would want to hear from Les about that. Um, and just to be clear, I'm, I'm not an attorney in Colorado. I certainly don't represent the city, so I can't answer questions that um, have to do with legal advice for the city. Um, and the other thing I would want to know at the work session is just how does the uh, Trinidad Community Foundation, how does it make decisions? It sounds like what Audra is suggesting we consider is that we kind of um, give them a lump sum to allocate. I would want to know how they go about making those decisions and what their priorities are, or are we allowed to give them priorities of things we'd like to see worked on in the city? Those are, that's the information I would want to hear at a work session. And we do have that information that's available for you. Okay. That's all I have. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll put it over then to another work session, Mr. Valentine, so we could have a deeper discussion. Thank you. Okay, item five, direction on committing funds, and that was on our rainy day fund, uh, if I'm correct. Is that correct, Mr. Valentine, that you're talking? 
that is correct, Mayor, and I apologize. Um, the direction I received the last time we discussed this was to get with council members, and uh, since that happened, everybody's on quarantine and everything. So I just wanted to uh, reiterate that council uh, get to me if we don't have a one-on-one -on -one with your ideas for committing this, so that we can we can bring bring a. Uh, uh, resolution before council before the end of the year um and that, that's that's all i have i i mean we there you know we had a discussion and where it was left off was if council would get with me on our one-on-ones well that hasn't been able to be accomplished because of this whole quarantine but uh i'm off i'm i'm negative i'm off quarantine i'll be back in the office so uh Give me a call, email me, we'll set something up, but uh, that's that's the reason for this, Mayor. I don't I don't want to uh, lose it because we, we should do this before the year end. Now, I think, uh, you know, if I remember reading right, and I'll, I'll read it again just for my clarification, is that council just has to have a resolution or something by the end of the year saying we are going to commit those funds, but then after the first of the year, we can actually uh, again, uh, start allocating in January or February, actually allocating the the money that we have to specific uh, uses. Uh, that's the way I read it. Uh, we might ought to check in that, see if I'm correct or not. I believe you are correct. We need to commit it with... Can you hear me? This is Cheryl. Yes. It needs, the ahead. funds need to be committed with specificity now. Did you hear me? Yes. Mm. So we can't just say we're going to commit a million dollars. We have to be specific. So when this resolution comes out, it's a, a one-time deal. We need to say, or council needs to say exactly what it's committed for. So, uh, okay, as it sits right now, that money sitting in the what in the rainy day fund technically council committed it to rainy day fund but it's not specific enough that makes sense okay yeah, let's do the let's do this could, gerald could you send a copy of that uh, designation of how we need to get this done again back out to us so that we can all have an opportunity to read it again i know it's there somewhere but i don't remember exactly where it's at it's it, it's on if you will get that yes, to it's you. on the drive uh, yeah so i think mayor um what the the issue is you you have the resolution you committed right. uh sort of broad like streets and you identify that but i think where you're coming from is like next year you can have a resolution committed to um, a different street. Is that correct, Cheryl? Yes, but so for example, if council were to put out a resolution now, it would say $2 million on West Main Street, and then it's committed. And then next year, should council decide that, no, nope, we don't want to do that street, you uncommit it, and then you name the new street and in a new resolution. So that's how that would work. Okay. I have a question. Go ahead. Sure. How much specificity does it have to be? Does it have to be a topic? Is it, you know, we're going to commit to roads and streets or and once we've chosen that topic, can we change it from that to something else, or does it have to stay in that that idea? No, it's it's strictly uh, council's um, decision. It does have to be specific. So, for example, it shouldn't say renovation of city buildings. It needs to say building a new city hall. It's very specific, um, but then, like I said, it's easily undone with a resolution, and then you put out another resolution to recommit it to something else. Yes. But it has to be specific. 
And, and how much do we have to commit right now before the end of the year? Do we have an exact figure? Um, so, yes, I believe that paperwork is in your drive. Hang on. Right. Our oh. proposed commitment Are we for seven hundred thousand. Uh, uh, it's actually uh, remaining for commitment is five million four hundred thirteen thousand seven hundred eight dollars. Um, is what I'm seeing. We've committed uh, seven million two hundred thirteen. Uh, in the Eagle Rock subdivision fleet compensated absences um, we'll get that resolution I mean that uh, it, it's on the Google Drive in our last work session but I'll get this uh, sent out to council again so kind of the, con the concept is and actually um, go ahead I, I was just, go ahead, I don't want to interrupt you. Go ahead, Cheryl, I'm sorry. Uh, Councilwoman Grego brought up economic development, or committing money for economic development, and I, I just totally forgot. We already have about 1.3 million sitting in economic development land uh, in an investment fund, so there's a very specific uh, idea right there economic development 1.3 million dollars for land so that would be uh, another item that we would be able to add to the proposed commitment should council choose can i ask my question may i ask my question so so we we simply need to do this pro forma or are we really saying this is what we want to do with the money i mean is that's important to me to understand because um we have lots of things it's a nice problem to have for sure uh but i'd like to make it that we are doing this with some thought so that we're not just saying well we're going to put it over there and then next week we're going to change our mind uh, you know our community is looking to us to make decisions for the long term and this is these are huge chunks of money that we're we're trying to decide where they go so i <coughs> someone okay oh. sorry <coughs> anyways i just i if if we need to really make this decision, then I think it's something we really have to decide. Uh, if it's just something that we have to make a decision to protect it, that's another conversation, I guess. And I don't know who that is, but I hope they're getting help. I do. I do have a recommendation. Once we're able to for council, I think that would that would be. I think it might have been four. Cheryl, are you okay? Um, oh, it's not me. <laughs> um, but I, I didn't hear your question. Yeah, I didn't hear your question. Uh, it's kind of a long question. <laughs> Karen, were you saying something? Okay. Um, I, I just was out, I guess I'm needing some clarification about how, how much uh, thought and intent we need to put into this decision. Um, well, it, it does require a lot of thought because once it comes out in the public and you say for example we're going to build a new rec center then the public is going to wait for a new rec center so yes it's going to require a lot of thought um again you can undo the resolution should something else come up that's more pressing but i mean there should be some due diligence when um mapping this out so that way you know we're transparent to the citizens and you know we're not just saying okay we're locking this money up just because we need to lock it up 
we need to have a very specific purpose. That's what I was hoping to understand. Okay. Okay. Uh, here's here's my recommendation that uh, there's another one there that we uh, look into it and probably a good word in, in a work session even if we have to have a special work session on it. Uh, the other thing I think that we need to do with this is, uh, you know, we being that we are able to you know change uh, if necessary, that we look at this, you know, we we. We get some uh, specificity uh, into the beginning and maybe on a quarterly basis we look at this to see if there are any changes that we need to reallocate funding because as we know needs do come up things do change and this will allow us to be able to look at any changes that week where we need to reallocate so that way we're on top of it on a quarterly basis or even on a semi-annual basis, whatever council wants to think about. But I think that would be one way that um, we, you know, we could probably do the best job with this money. Now let's ask Mr. So, go ahead, go ahead, Mike. That's, uh, that's kind of the reason I'd like uh, council no. to uh, Give me their input. We'll consolidate it as staff. We'll have that work session. Thank you. I, you, you broke up quite a bit there. You try again. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so um, that's the reason I, I, I bring this forward so that uh, I get council's input and we'll put that, uh, consolidate that all together so that uh, we have a good work session and, and all the projects, uh, topics are, are covered in that work session. So uh, please reach out to me. Um, like I said, I, I'm off quarantine. We could, uh, we could meet. Okay. Uh, I know I've given you my ideas, uh, but I'll continue to think there's any others and I'll get them to you if necessary. Yes, thank you. Okay, are there any other, any other questions concerning that, Mr. Goodall? I believe that's good. I look forward to this work session getting it hatched out. I just sent Mike a message. Let me know what time Thursday you want to meet and I'll bring my notebook full of suggestions. <laughs> okay, Perfect. Uh, Mr. Craigle, do you have any questions on that? No, sir, I don't. Uh, how about Mr. Shu? Did he have any questions? No, no, I didn't. No. Work on the, the work session. Yeah. Mr. DeBono, anything on? Okay. Not at this time, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Ms. Ogletree, any other thoughts? Uh, I just need to know when do we have to, what's the deadline for this? For what, us would to make the, what would be the recommended date for the work session, Mr. Uh, Mr. Valentine? Um, looking at a calendar, hang on. Um, we could do it as soon as uh, November 23rd um, or December 7th for a work session. It, it is just a resolution, so I believe it's just uh, one reading and passing so we can get it done. Um, otherwise, let's shoot for uh, November 23rd. And it, and it so needs to be passed by December 15th, correct? That's our last meeting? Uh, that is correct, unless we have a special one, which uh, which I hope we don't. Right. We're, we're pushing budget pretty good, and so, yes. That gives us a month. Okay. So okay. if you could next week get a hold of me or uh, Thursday, <laughs> I'll All you right. some time. You, you text me and tell me what's good for you. I know you're just getting back. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, item six, discussion of other agenda items. Does council have any questions on future uh, work session items that they would like to have discussed? 
Mr. Goodall, do you have any recommendations? No, I think we got some pretty good pressing stuff to get in there for right now, so I can't think of anything more pressing than what we got. Okay, Ms. Grego. No, sir. How about Mr. Shu? Does he have any any thoughts on that? No, not a time. Thank you. Mr. DeBono. No thoughts, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Uh, Ms. Ogletree, any, any other items? Just to follow up the, the discussion we had at City Council the other night, I'm working on my conversations with people about community readiness. And as I understand it, we need to have some conversation about that at a work session before the end of the year, too. Yeah, that's good. And we'll put that down, Mike, and we'll have that discussion as well. Okay. Yes, sir. Well, with that being said, I guess that is all we need to cover. I think we had a pretty good work session. and. Uh, Thank uh, all of council for your input and uh, stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, we'll see you next week. Good night, everybody. I'd like hey, to reflect that my quarantining is just beginning. Just <laughs> beginning. <laughs> <laughs> so, can't, can't bother me. Can't call. Can't come by. No, just kidding. I'm just kidding. Good job on the Raiders. <laughs> Yeah, go Raiders! Boom! <laughs> okay, everybody, good night. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.